All right, fellas, I uh, had a, someone mention that last time they couldn't see everything I'm doing because of the angle of the camera. So I've changed the angle around some thread fin shad of various colors and sorts for him. Some of them are weighted and some of them are unweighted actually. This poly dodger adds erratic motion. It's just like a crankbait. It's just like a homemade crankbait. I keep saying that all the time. If you're a walleye fisherman, a bass fisherman, even a crappie fisherman who drags crankbaits, that should just look as right as rain to you. If you're a fly fisherman, this is nothing but a hard hackle, a hard collar. That's all it is. It does the same thing as a collar does. It's just hard instead of made out of feathers. Uh, it's different. It's not what you're used to if you're a fly fisherman. So just, you know, if this is something that disrupts your sensibilities, just please stop watching. Otherwise, I hope you learned something. I make these out of polymer clay baked in the oven. Then they're super glued here with some thread here and I make the tail. It's number two alt hook. This is a number two hook. Number two, two alt. Two beads. And once again, if you're a walleye fisherman who is used to crawler harnesses, those beads should be familiar to you. It should look as right as rain. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No need to lay a base of thread like traditional fly fishing does. Just get it started. And then put your beads on your hook here. This is thr this is thr uh, thrash lashed on with super glue and with some um, uh, crystal flash or so, uh, to, to cover up the thread to make it a little bit more a little bit flashier. But and it's lashed onto the main hook exactly the same way it's lashed on the back back hook. I've never had a fish pull this loose. The color of the beads don't really matter. They're there just to add some noise mostly. <laughs> so don't have to go touching turns on the way down, but you do need to do touching turns on the way back up. You know, lay down a bead of super glue there on the top and a preferably a thinner bead on the bottom. Touching turns on the way back up. If this is a fly completely and totally born on a rotary vise. I mean, if without the rotary vise, I never would have designed anything like this because I would have been, could you imagine doing all that like that? No way. It's crazy, right? But this, bam. And this is not even a fast rotary vise considered compared to something like those Nor vises where they can just literally spin it and it's just like friction free, you know? Always with the rotary vise half hitch into place. Uh, Stuka Bear on duty, as always. Homemade bodkin. I import these beads from China. These are the big beads. I don't know what the millimeters or anything, but just big honking ugly beads, just like on a rattle trap. But I can't call it rattle trap because that's you know copyright and stuff or whatever trademark. I don't. I'm not trying to copy them. It's just I'm just. This is my own design, and I just added these features because uh, the purpose of a lure is to is to not always to necessarily mimic exactly what you see in the wild. Sometimes the purpose of a lure is to caricaturize. In other words, this is going to characterize the swimming motion. It really does swim back and forth. It doesn't go in a circle. It just swims back and forth. It, it goes in an erratic pattern. It dumps off the water as the water pressure builds up, whatever side is loaded the most gets dumped off. So it's erratic. It creates erratic motion. And one thing I've learned in trolling and drifting is steady, just dead moving flip bait like that. That's just not, it just doesn't catch much. You get something that's, you know, kind of like what you guys do with swim baits and bass fishing. It pretty much does the same thing, except I can do it while drifting and trolling. Next is yarn white. This one has four strands in it. And you just pull them apart like that. Always put a dab of glue once I get the rattle on. Really get it down in those threads. And a lot of people, does this thing, is it hard to cast? To me it isn't. I've cast it with a seven weight fly rod and it casts not, and it casts just like any and for bass gear spinning gear bait casting gear it, it just like a rattle trap except you'll have to add some this is the unweighted version the weighted version will have some lead core lines spun around the shank so it'll add some weight that will help it get down but probably still have to rig it up like a uh, 
either a Kentucky rig or a Carolina rig just like this and then we just start wrapping forward now I always use yarn because it's cheap you can get it from Walmart and one thing a yarn will last you really just a basic a lifetime worth of flies for each color to make this faster and easier some sort of chenille would be a lot faster because you could just wrap it forward once and not have to go back down and up down and up down and up like I'm doing here okay now red we're using synthetic hair only on this one and I get this Congo hair it's called Congo hair and I get it from um, Fly Tires Dungeon the beads I bought from Jan's Netcraft the poly dodgers up uh the clay baking clay or whatever the i got from like michael's or whatever this stuff next is crystal flash i have a lot more lights off so we can get the proper lighting with the camera so uh, this is the hardest part is this part it's my least favorite part because i'm almost always sticking myself with the stinking hook and there's no way for me to do this without getting my hand in the way so sorry just have to gathering loop you're putting the crystal flash on the bottom unlike many many streamers um, well I should say maybe perhaps fresh water streamers this one is designed to run hook down but you have a hook that's going up now uh, crystal flash there for some flash flash here beads for noise red for simulating sort of gills or bleeding gills whatever and now comes the uh, olive hair this is not bucktail this is just again more crystal flash nor more congo hair it's a synthetic hair from fly tires dungeon then we have straight up black tinsel cut it in half half again and then half again measure it snip the ends and then this is a little bit easier but you still got when you're tying these hooks like that tandem be careful of that hook right there okay that that's just gonna it can it can be miserable <laughs> you think you're clear nope hook emergency room time with black thread embroidery thread nothing fancy I just go to the Wally world buy black embroidery thread or Michaels or any of these places I don't worry about special jig tying thread or fly tying threads like come on now so one, two, three. Yeah, I was wondering that was kind of weird. And then I just break the thread off. Back to the super glue. Um, I I had experience minute experimented with goop thinned out with xylene, but I don't like it for fly time because I don't think it's strong enough. It would never hold the hook in place. Six millimeter traditional eyes. That you know I'd rather. Oh come on, really. I'd rather go with something more traditional black eyes with a gold background or whatever see looks fishy now we try to get those eyes evened out as much as possible and that my friends is a one of my thread fin shed patterns meant for casting trolling you can tip it with a night crawler just like crawler harnesses you can put some uh, cut bait on it in fact I plan on doing a catfish lure series I do and you got that big rattle rattle here and the beads make a lot of noise I prefer the deer hair and bucktail but the customer wanted more of subtlety in the colors and so we're gonna give them some I'll say compared to this color All right different shade of green still the same and so that completes this set now we'll have to make a weighted one but which I won't do but that my friends is that what looks the best on camera here let's see drape I don't know I don't know. If you like them, they're on the website. Uh, let me know. And uh, I'll see you.